For older people to be involved in their community and access services, take part in activities, they need to be able to move around easily. In the recent past, there were more options available to transport older people around their neighbourhood. But this has come under pressure with funding cuts affecting real lives. Since I've become a widow, one day is pretty much like another, really. You just get up and go through the, the motions, that's all. That's all I do. I come down in my nighty normally. <laughs> lazy and then I uh, am happy breakfast and then I wash up and then I go upstairs and get washed, changed or a shower, whatever and then uh, do a bit of tidying up or whatever I need to do, do a bit of washing and, and then see what the day holds and see if I'm meeting any of my friends and, and, and the day proceeds from there. I have lived in the Moston area for now on 70 years. I, uh, yeah, I, I was five when I moved up to Moston and I've lived here ever since. We, we really need a, a really decent bus uh, service uh, to get to particular places. I'm, I'm lucky in some ways where I live because I'm, I'm not on a bad bus route, but for other people, say on Lightbound Road, which is very difficult for buses, and I can't get to a particular place that I would want to go on New Moston. And there's just no bus available. Or there is, but you have a long walk or a taxi. And that's about it. Bus transportation matters to me because I need to get from A to B, as does everybody. I'm not, I understand that. Uh, but it, it, uh, it's the only means of transport I have. And, and it's essential to me. You know, I've heard rumours that the 151's going, which will affect a lot of people. Uh, more than me, I only use it on a Wednesday, but nevertheless, people do need that, that service, or a service. We need something. So if that does happen with the 151, I won't be going, and I don't think I'll be on my own. So there'll be a lot of people like myself who are lonely enough <laughs> not going out because, as I say, taxis are too expensive, and it's awkward to get, so we have to get two buses as it is. So that'll be that. There's quite a few challenges that are being faced um, for older people today. Um, I'm working with Transport for Greater Manchester, with the Aging Club at GMCA, with Centre for Aging Better, with the Older People's Network to find out what those challenges are and what solutions can be put into place to help tackle them. So, for example, making sure that older people get to have a say when decisions are made around transport and making sure that transport is accessible and not only that, say, your bus is accessible or your train's accessible, but actually you can get from A to B without issues, so pave, if there are problems with pavements um, or the ability to be able to get to the bus stop to begin with once you're in town, whether if there are A-boards everywhere or whether um, no way you can go to the toilet, you can have a sit down, those kind of things to make that whole system better for older people. I only use two bus routes, one to Asda's, one to Middleton. My name is Norman Green, I'm 80 year old and I live here in Moston. Well, I can't go shopping without it. Can't live without it. I have no family, so I have nobody to bring anything to me. I don't like the internet. Well, I won't go on the internet. Uh, I don't trust the internet, I'll tell, tell you that now. And so, so I do all my shopping, and I, most of my shopping, as does I, I in Middleton, and that, for that I need bus, bus transport. My name's Hazel Rock. I'm 75 in May and I live at Sydney Jones's Court. Only a few months ago I had gone shopping in the local area. I was there in plenty of time to catch the bus but the bus did not come. Yes I could have walked but the weather was bad so I waited for the bus. The next bus came and I got on it, did my shopping but why I go and get the bus home? I saw the bus coming up Rochdale Road. I was at the bottom of Muston Lane. I thought, I must get that bus. The next one's half hour later. And so I crossed over Muston Lane and started running for the bus. Silly thing to do, I fell. And I had an accident and cut my chin open. The bus had come round the corner and he stopped for me. I got on the bus, he said, is there anybody I can get in touch with? No, I live on my own. 
When I got off the bus, he says, you do need to see to you, your face. And I says, yes, thank you very much. Uh, but I says, the only reason I ran for that bus was because I was frightened that the next one wouldn't come and I would have had to wait that extra half hour. I knew I shouldn't have run, but that was it. As part of the Ambition for Ageing, a big lottery funded initiative to find new ways of tackling social isolation in older people, MMU, along with neighbourhood stakeholders and older residents, set up the age-friendly Mostyn and New Mostyn partnership. The aim was to research how age-friendly the neighbourhood is, using the World Health Organisation's eight domains of what makes an age-friendly city. The partnership also created an action plan to improve the area for older people, and used a community investment pot of funding to create projects that are co-designed by older residents. Bus transportation matters to me because we predominantly work with older people, our targets are over 50s, but a lot of our older people have bus passes, so free travel. So this gives them access to the whole city. You know, if they, if they really wanted to, they could go to the other side of the city, they could do anything, but actually, if you don't have a proper bus service, they, they can't access the city. And then that's a loss to the city as well as the person. Well, I wanted to join a technology course because I'm not very good with technology. I know people say, oh, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. So I thought I'd join a technology course with a, a place called Nefra, which is on Parkfield Avenue in New Moston. And I did go for several weeks. And I used to get a taxi because of the buses and I found it got too expensive for me, so I dropped out. So it's affected me that way. I'm, I'm still not very good on technology. Um, I'm not very good at all. And I think it's all going that way, which it is. You've got to have the emails and all oh, things that go right over my head. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not very good, full stop, on technology. The main form of transport that I use uh, is the bus. I would rate it very low, uh, probably two out of ten, because uh, there is a bus that goes near to Nefra, but it's only once an hour and it doesn't get to Nefra at the time you want for... Well, because of uh, the lack of buses, if I do um, walk to Nefra, the next day uh, I'm aching, I've got a problem with my hip and my hip aches because I've done a long walk. So I do have to try and rely on people giving me lifts and um, not have a long walk. So it does affect my health, really. Uh, the bus service is, is in decline. Um, more people who uh, have their own vehicles. The, the bus routes aren't profitable, so they're not, um, bus companies are reluctant to run later night services or services to more remote areas or where there's less disposable income. So they're in decline there. The, the subsidies they would have received from local authorities are in decline. So it's like a vicious circle. Less people use the bus, it becomes less reliable, and it's this it's a downward spiral. Um, and I can't really see an answer to, to, to stopping that decline. The new 117 bus route runs from the city centre to Middleton, via Mostyn and New Mostyn, giving the two areas more connection. But this service is every half an hour and follows the normal bus routes. It doesn't cover areas like Lightbound Road where people's GPs are. This is why we need a volunteer driving service. The bus is welcome, but still doesn't serve the older community. Well, we operate the volunteer driver service in, in Rochdale. Um, to give you a perspective on what it does, it's exactly what it says on the tin. Volunteers drive as a service, and they take older people to doctor's appointments, dentists, anything that they would require transport and they can't or struggle to use the public transport. We do, on average, 1,500 trips a month delivered by a pool of around 40 volunteer drivers. It's beyond just a, a, a glorified taxi service. The relationship a driver uh, creates with the passenger. You know, in, in saying that an older person, person is going to a hospital appointment, that's pretty traumatic and stressful. Aid that a bit by having a friendly, reliable face that's there to, to sort of, you know, be a friend. They're not, they're not, it's not a transaction. It, you know, it's not, it's, it's, there's a relationship and it's not just a business thing, you know, what you would get with a taxi. Schemes such as volunteer drivers where the community is taking control of being able to support people and particularly those who are unable to use some of the other services so that can actually get directly from the door to 
the place they're going to are really good schemes, particularly for people with mobility issues or those who maybe haven't left the house for a very long time. Those kind of services can really be that step towards getting back into the community. I'm part of the Age Friendly Moston New Moston group and um, we are trying to get together a driver's scheme where volunteer drivers uh, will do journeys for people. I think it would be a good thing, providing, and I say this, providing it's done at reasonable times. It's probably better than using taxis because the taxi drivers now don't even know the areas, you know, even if they've got a sat nav. Well, it's relatively simple. Um, so somebody who's become a member would ring up and say, I've got a hospital appointment next Wednesday at 12 o'clock at Salford Royal. Um, can, you, can you sort me a driver out? So we would then look on our database of our drivers, allocate the driver who lives closest to the potential passenger. So we'll, we'll call the passenger Tom. And the nearest driver to him is Joan. So we would allocate Joan to that job after speaking to Joan just to check her avail availability. Tom, your driver today, on, on, the, on Thursday is going to be Joan. It's going to cost £2.20. Um, Joan will wait for you. Joan takes the, uh, Tom back. Tom pays Joan the £2.20. Um, and, and that, in a nutshell, it's, it, the beauty of it is it's simple. The challenges of setting up this volunteer driving project is going to be uh, the funding. So we funded the project so far and we're going to have a, a local neighbourhood uh, group to deliver it. But it's going to be quite intensive for a start in setting up in terms of recruiting drivers, uh, making sure the system works and stuff, you know, to make sure that those people can't access the city. For it to succeed, we need volunteers. We need people who are willing to take their neighbour or take someone from the neighbourhood to where they want to go. We need support from people like the City Council and, and Transport for Manchester. Recognise that actually the community has the solution to solve transport problems if they were given the right support. Because if you think about it, to bring back a bus route is going to cost thousands, it's going to be a bus, it's going to be that. We can get people from A to B on a very low sort of reduc reduced rate and actually, so this could be a solution. You know, and all we're doing is activating the assets we've got in the neighbourhood. You know, they are there, they are willing to do it. We just got to find them and make sure that they are supported while doing it. Oh, I think it'll be a tremendous thing if it takes off for people. Yeah, I really do. I know there's like, the, you know, I mean, people are only on pensions, which I am myself. Uh, you know, you've got to watch what you do, obviously, because your money will only go one way. Um, yeah, but I think if it takes off, it'll be a wonderful idea.